Today we're going to find out a little bit about uh, what the Barrier Wall Project is about, why are we doing it, who's doing it, and most importantly, how's it going? Well, we have arrived safely at the uh, barge, and we're going to talk a little bit about safety and get a perspective from uh, Terry, the Marine Superintendent. As you all know, we've, we, we live safety, and I think this is a great example of actually doing some fairly hazardous work uh, and doing it safely. Terry, what do you think about in terms of safety? What's the risk, what's the hazards that you face that stand out in your mind? Well, the risk in this sort of environment are quite extensive. You know, you've, the main one is drowning. You're working over water, right. you're working at height, you've got all sorts of different aspects. You know, once we pull the piles out, we've got lifting. So that's the point. The, the, the panels we're pulling out, up to 17, 18 tonne. So then you've got crane movements with on, on the barge. And then as you move around, you see you've got the dredger. So that you've got that movement all the time. I'm with Gary, the project manager uh, with Magnox. Gary, I'm interested in, in understanding a little bit about what is what was the barrier wall um, wh and what, what you've done here. Okay, well the barrier wall, um, we're in the uh, Blackwater estuary. We're 400 meters or, uh, or so offshore. And the barrier wall consisted of um, a central concrete structure with four uh, three meter diameter pipes running into the power station and two of those uh, took the water into the station to cool down the condensers and two of them actually brought the water back out into the river uh, for discharge. Um, we built the, or they built the, uh, the wing walls which are uh, a solid steel piled structures uh, around about 100 metres uh, along the, uh, the barrier um, for separation so we take the water in from one side and we take the water out from the, uh, or back in from the other side. Um, the reason we're taking it down it, it's you know, it's a very old structure, it's not required anymore, it's unsafe, it had to be removed and that's what we're doing and we're taking it down by using divers, uh, they dredge a big trench and they cut the pile out and we lift it and take it away. What's the biggest challenge associated with this job? The biggest challenge I would say is the weather. Um, diving is um, you know, relatively straightforward but the weather uh, and wind in particular is a very very uh, challenging sort of thing. It's often much windier out here although not very far offshore than it is when you're actually onshore. Um, and we're in a tidal area as well so we, ha we have to work um, during the changing of the tides. So we have to work very much in uh, the sort of the tidal windows and that limits the diving. Um, and diving is actually the cutting. So that's uh, the biggest challenge for this job. I'm with uh, Dean, who's with uh, Red 7. And Dean, I'm interested in what do you do and what do you think about when you get ready for a dive? Uh, pretty much what the job is. Just you try, to, try to approach it as a professional manner and really, make it as easy as, as easy as possible to do. Because you're in a three-dimensional world, which you float up, up and down, back and forth. You can try and think of how you can use your arms and legs to the job in the best way you can in a safe manner and uh, get back up the top of it. How do you check your equipment before you? Um, when uh, you would start up with uh, a dry suit in these conditions, you have a bailout bottle on the back, you then uh, put the hat on your head, the comms check, and you, uh, you then connect up the bailout air, which you then do a check on that. Then um, you then, uh, if that's okay, you then go to main air, final checks. You're locked in the hat and then you're good to go. What's a typical dive? Um, depending on what depth it is, high or low tide, you can vary here between 90 minutes to two and a half hours. Okay. Well, great. What we have here is what's left of the barrier wall. And what we have here is the two guys that have been driving this. So, how is it going? It's going very well now. Um, it took us a, a while to get into our rhythm. Um, as you can see, we should be getting the last panels out by, by the shift uh, weekend. 
Um, there's been challenges on the material. Um, we switched to a, a long beam excavator halfway through the job. After we get these panels out uh, by the weekend, then there'll just be dredging work where we have to uh, backfill the trench that we dug on, on the seabed to get the divers in to put it on. Um, the challenges for us as of staying here, I think working with yourselves on, on magnets, is sort of we brought out sort of nuclear experience and had to sort of teach Red 7 uh, that there's a little bit more detail in the planning is required and um, we managed to get them on board with that finally get everything in place and get them understand the detail that you have to follow to do the job. Right. As we as we kind of get to the end of this project, we've been working together for over almost two years with getting permission, working with the stakeholders, uh, getting the equipment here. We've certainly learned a lot about how to deliver this work with you as a, as a team member, as a, as a supply chain. What, what have you guys learned? What, what's the takeaway? We've been, I think we've been able with yourselves, um, is the nuclear experience that we've got, the experience that we have as being a, a, a principal contractor. We've been able to demonstrate to you that, that, that our contractor can take on that role and help you deliver the project. Great, and I, I think that's the learning that's still going on, and, and really across Magnox, certainly at Bradwell, that, that teamwork of learning how different, different working arrangements can actually um, achieve success, and I think this is a great success for both your company and I. Thanks. As you can see, this is this is a great project. It's a great team, and we've uh, achieved a tremendous amount. The keys, I believe, success were. Uh, a focus on safety, working as a team, and, and delivering day to day. And it's something that we'll take um, across all of Magnox. I think it's really an example of, of how Magnox working with the supply chain um, is now demonstrating that we can deliver. There's lots more to deliver both at Bradwell and Trouts. We've got removal of Fed at Bradwell, removal of Fred, Fed at, at Trouts. Lots of challenges ahead, but I think this provides real example we can get it done.